Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube? Diggy546. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so let's cut the shenanigans here. Let's cut the shenanigans. I've been seeing reports pretty much all day. Of, it started with an article pretty much on GiantsWire.com. It started with an article there saying that the Giants should consider or undercover, you know, like under the radar candidates that the Giants would consider trading or cutting. And it seems like people have taken this and ran with it. First of all, these writers, they have to come out with lists. They got to come out with lists every once in a while. They, they, they get told by their whoever is, you know, running the site. They get told, listen, we need these lists. We need a certain amount of articles a month. So they run out of stuff to say. So when you, you make a list and you have Kadarius Tony on the list, it doesn't make much sense at all. I think that's just a poor choice of a player you picked to cut. And you probably knew that it was going to get a lot of traction if you put someone like Kadarius Tony on the list. Because first of all, Kadarius Tony's played, what, like six or seven games for us? And he's been injured in most of those games. So you're going to cut the guy who, in the, in the little bit of time that he's shown, he's shown that he has the potential to be probably one of the best receivers in the league. And listen, people, I'm not saying that he is or he will be. I'm saying he's shown that he has the potential to be one of the best receivers in the entirety of the NFL. And you're just going to cut him after one year. You're just going to trade the guy after one year. Does that make any sense? What do you even get back as far as compensation wise? You probably don't even get a first round pick back because he's an unproven guy and he's coming off of an injury ridden season. So it makes absolutely no sense to cut Kadarius Toney. And it makes no sense to cut him or trade him. The guy is literally still a rookie. His first five or six or seven games this year, pretty much this entire season is going to be kind of like a rookie season for Kadarius Tony because he's missed so much time. Now, there are concerns, and I brought this up on several occasions. Was Kadarius Tony mailing it in? Was he just saying, this is a lost season, so I'm not going to try? Was he just saying that this is a lost season and I'm not getting the ball the way I think I should? So I'm not going to play because a lot of times he did not fight through injury. Now, I don't know the severity of the guy's injuries. I have no idea what was going on with him at all. So I'm not going to point fingers like some fans want to point fingers. I'm, I'm not inside the dude's body. I don't know how he felt. I don't know what was going on. But it seems like he, he was injured most of the season. And I'm not sure if that was him not fighting through it or the training staff literally not letting him play. So Kadarius Tony is still a wild card and it makes no sense. You don't get the value. You don't you don't get much of anything out of that by trading them. So I'm very excited to see what Brian Dable, what Mike Kafka, this new staff that we've put together. I want to see what they can get out of Kadarius Tony. I don't think we have a wide receivers coach yet, but Debo Samuel, watch him. You watch a, a bunch of these guys, a bunch of these guys. Kadarius Tony can be that gadget Debo Samuel type of receiver, but he can also line up and run routes. Going all the way back to my college tape on Kadarius Tony, my college film session on him, the dude, when he really gets into his bag and he's running routes down the field, he can create separation that way too. So he's not just a gadget player. He's, he's a full around weapon all over the field, and it makes no sense to get rid of him. So that's just my take on the Kadarius Tony part of the list. Who also was on the list was James Bradbury, who that pretty much was a was a trade candidate from the start. You, you pretty much thought that James Bradbury might be somebody the Giants might move on from because he has that high cap hit, because he's getting older. He might not want to stay on the Giants for too much longer because he's getting older. And and that makes sense to me. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up parting ways or they end up getting rid of him some way. But other than that, Saquon Barkley was on the list. And Yes, I would be a proponent of trading away Saquon Barkley because we're not going to pay him. I would be a proponent of that, but my problem is this. Saquon is coming off of another season where he has not looked like himself. Now, those three, four, five games, the last couple of games of the season, he started to look more and more like Saquon, the Saquon that we knew. If he can go out there and rush for, you know, it doesn't even have to be a yardage, but if he can go out there and look like the Saquon in 2018, and he can do that for the first five or six weeks of the season, we can trade this dude in season. But right now, it makes absolutely no sense to trade for Saquon. What are you going to get? A fifth, a sixth round pick? 
why do that when you probably can get a fifth or sixth round pick or a third round, you know, not a third, but a, you probably can get a fifth, sixth, or a fourth round pick during the season at the worst case scenario. I, I just don't see what you get out of trading Saquon away before the season even starts. I just don't see. I mean, maybe you, you get a fifth out of it. I don't think you're getting more than a fourth. I just don't think. I think his value, his highest value, will be in a better season with a better offensive line, with better quarterback play around him because he has a better system. And watching him be the Saquon of old or be 70 to 80% of the Saquon of old, and best case scenario, we get a second or first round pick because he's absolutely destroying the league. And worst case scenario, I think we get a third or fourth round pick. But right now his value is at the all-time lowest, which is why you see the Giants pretty much, I mean, they're talking him up saying, We've got to put the, a line around him. We've got to, you know, put him in the right positions to succeed. They're taking all of the blame off of him because he has to, his value has got to skyrocket. It's, it's got to skyrocket before we can think about trading him because right now the cost of getting rid of him doesn't really, you're not really getting better as a team. You're not getting better as a team by just getting rid of Saquon. You're not getting the, the value back that I think you should get. So that being said, would I be like drop dead shocked if we traded him? Absolutely not, because he is a running back, and I don't think we're going to pay him. I just don't think we're going to pay him no matter what. Even if he has a great year this year, we'll probably franchise him because it'll be his first good year in about two or three years. But other than that, some guys I do think that the Giants will get rid of is, like I said, James Bradbury. Bradbury is a guy who had a really, really great season, really great season two years ago. Looked like a top three, top two corner in the entirety of the NFL broke up passes all over the place, shut down half of the field. And then his next year in that same scheme, you would think he would take the step up or, or kind of maintain where he was or fall off just a little, but he fell off a lot. And he kind of worked his way to get back to being a very good corner in the second half of that season. But the first half was really a struggle for him. And he's only getting a year older and his cap hit is only going up and up. I'm pretty sure it's up over 16 million. Pretty sure, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's a very high cap hit. So I would not be shocked to see him go. And I think that he's probably one of the top guys who probably you're going to end up getting cut. Another guy, sadly, is Blake Martinez. He's coming off of the ACL. He's a Patrick Graham guy. I think he probably goes to the Raiders for cheap. Patrick Graham unlocks the best out of Blake Martinez. Blake Martinez was someone on the Packers who was a good linebacker was a really good linebacker with Patrick Graham when he was there with him. But after Patrick Graham left, Martinez was getting all kinds of hate from Packers fans and from fans across the league of just not being able to cover, being slow, being out of place. So we'll see if he can get back to being the Blake Martinez that he's been the last couple of years. If not, I see us getting rid of him and him going over to join forces with Patrick Graham for the Raiders, which would be a really good, good, a really good find for them. Um, other than that, Adoree Jackson has stepped up, and, and that's probably more fuel to the, the James Bradbury, you know, leaving. Adoree Jackson has stepped up, and he's a younger guy. He's a younger guy. He actually was able to stay healthy for most of the season, and I think that Adoree Jackson is one of the guys who's definitely safe. Kenny Galladay being cut is absolutely nonsense. The contract does not work out. We're not going to cut the guy and take a, a huge 20-something million dollar cap hit. Same thing with Leonard Williams. We're not going to take an almost $30 million cap hit for cutting Leonard Williams. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, Sterling Shepard is probably a guy that will be cut or traded or whatever we can get out of, you know, out of him leaving. I think we'll, we'll explore the trade, but he probably will end up being cut because the injuries, sadly, he's one of my favorite Giants. And I'm still thinking about getting the guy's jersey that has number three because I just want a single digit Giants jersey so bad. and. I mean, he, in my mind, he'll always be a giant, no matter what. Even though we didn't win what, with him, Sterling Shepard's still one of my favorite players. But I think he's gone because he just cannot stay healthy to save his life. It's, it's the Achilles in the last game of the season. Before that, it's, it's, it's always something with him. And I don't want to see him go. I would love to see him come back as a New York Giant. But it just doesn't seem like it's realistic at that point, especially with the cap hit is of like almost $10 million. Other than that, Riley Dixon is a guy that probably will end up going. He's making way too much money for a punter, almost $3 million as a punter, and he's not one of the premier punters in the league. Hasn't been since about in a couple of years. So those are some guys I'm looking at actually probably getting rid of.
But as far as the Kadarius Tony thing, that is preposterous, completely not going to happen. And as far as the Saquon thing, it possibly could happen, but I doubt that they will make that move right now because they would not get enough value back for making that kind of trade. But you guys let me know who you're thinking as far as who do we have to cut? Who do we have to keep? I know some Giants fans absolutely cannot stand Kenny Galladay and they want to just take the cap hit and get rid of him. But let me know what you're thinking down in the comments. You made it this deep into the video. Come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily. And during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.